This video displays electrospinning polymers, a popular technique for tissue engineering and cell culture to create fibrous scaffolds that mimic the architecture and size scale of the native extracellular matrix. Here, we electrospin a photoreactive hyaluronic acid capable of cross-linking with light exposure and introduce further processing applications such as photopatterning, a process that creates channels in scaffolds, and multi-scale porosity to increase cellular infiltration and tissue distribution. In addition, we use multi-polymer scaffold formation that permits electrospinning of two different polymers into the same mat, allowing for tuning of scaffold mechanics and degradation, and tailoring of porosity for cellular infiltration. Hi, I'm Jamie Ifkovitz from the laboratory of Jason Burdick in the Department of Bioengineering at the University of Pennsylvania. Hi, I'm Harini Sundaragavan, also from the Burdick Lab. Today we will be showing you a procedure for electrospinning fiber scaffolds for tissue engineering. We will also introduce the additional processing capabilities of photopatterning and multipolymer scaffold formation. We use these procedures in our laboratory to study HMSC cell interactions and infiltrations in hyaluronic acid scaffolds. We also use these techniques with various other polymers to study fiber reinforced tissues such as the meniscus and myocardium. So let's get started. Prepare a 0.5% weight solution of the photoinitiator, Ergocure 2959 or I2959, in deionized water by dissolving at 37 degrees Celsius for several days. Ergocure is used if a photoreactive polymer is needed for electrospinning. To prepare the electrospinning solution, combine to final concentrations in deionized water 2% weight methacrylated hyaluronic acid, or MEHA, 3% weight polyethylene oxide, or PEO, and 0.05% weight I2959 solution. Vortex for 5 minutes and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius overnight to dissolve the solution. Transfer the solution into a syringe and attach an 18-gauge, 6-inch long blunt end needle to the end. Next, use a syringe pump and set to eject at a rate of 1.2 milliliters per hour. Insert the syringe and needle into the syringe pump. Attach the grounded lead of a high voltage power source to the collection apparatus. In this procedure, we will use a mandrel rotating at about 10 meters per second to collect aligned fibers. Attach the positively charged lead to the needle. Adjust the needle or collecting device such that there is a 15 centimeter distance between the two. Start the syringe pump flow and when fluid is visualized on the tip of the needle, turn on the power source and set the voltage to 22 kilovolts. Collect fibers onto the scaffold until the desired thickness is reached. The collection time depends on the desired thickness and the volume of electrospinning solution used. For photopatterning, we use electrospun mats spun for 16 hours. Remove the scaffold from the collection apparatus after collection is complete. and store it under vacuum overnight for complete removal of the solvent. Cut out 5mm by 5mm samples from the scaffold mat with scissors. Place each scaffold on a foil-covered glass slide to prepare for cross-linking and place the photo mask directly on the scaffold. covering with a clean glass slide and clipping both ends of the slide with binder clips. Using a nitrogen chamber, purge the scaffold to inhibit reduction of cross-linking due to oxygen exposure. Place the scaffold setup in the nitrogen chamber under about 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared 365 nanometer light with a collimating adapter for five minutes. Remove each scaffold and place in a 12-well tissue culture plate. Add 2 milliliters of deionized water into each well. Parafilm the plate to prevent evaporation of the water and place at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Change the water every 8 hours using a vacuum pipette to aspirate deionized water from the well between washes. Prepare a 5% weight solution of PEO in 90% ethanol. 
on a hot plate, stir at 700 RPM at 50 degrees Celsius for at least two hours prior to the procedure. After stirring, add DAPI for a final concentration of 10 micrograms per milliliter. Transfer the PEO and DAPI solution to a 3 milliliter syringe and wrap it in aluminum foil to protect it from light. Next, prepare the electrospinning solution described in the second section and add methacryloxyethyl thiocarbamoyl rhodamine B for a final concentration of 25 micromolar. Micropipette into a 3 milliliter syringe and wrap in aluminum foil to protect it from light. Carefully use scotch tape to secure the edges of 22 mm by 22 mm methacrylated glass cover slips to the surface of the mandrel, such that the cover slips fit around the mandrel circumference. Using a 5 mm long piece of silicone tubing, attach one end to one of the syringes with lure lock attachments. Attach the other end to a needle. Insert the syringe into the syringe pump and put the needle through the hole in the fanner. The fanners translate the length of the mandrel and are used to ensure an equal distribution of both polymers in the resulting scaffold. Ensure that the needle tips are centered on the mandrel. For the syringe containing MEHA, locate the needle tip to 15 cm from the mandrel and set the fanner to a 6 cm distance from the needle tip. Program the syringe pump to deliver 1.2 mL per hour and set the power source to 22 kV. Set up the syringe with PEO in exactly the same manner, but locate the needle tip to 10 cm from the mandrel and set the power source to 15 kV. Following this, turn off the lights and turn on the mandrel and the syringe pumps. Remove the aluminum foil from the syringes. When fluid is visible on the tips of both needles, simultaneously turn on the power supplies and plug in the fanners. When collection is complete, turn off the power supplies and mandrel and unplug the fanners. Carefully remove the cover slips and tape using a razor blade. Fibers can be visualized on a fluorescent microscope equipped with filters for rhodamine and DAPI. Place each cover slip with electrospun polymer attached into an individual well of a six well plate. Incubate the scaffolds in 2 milliliters of PBS overnight to ensure complete removal of solvent and contaminants. After 24 hours, use vacuum to aspirate the PBS from the well. Place scaffolds under a germicidal UV lamp in a laminar flow hood for 30 minutes for sterilization. Perform standard cell culture and prepare a concentrated cell suspension at the desired cell density. For example, use 100 milliliters of cell suspension for a 22 by 22 millimeter cover slip. Place in the incubator for one hour. Add the appropriate amount of cell culture media to each well. Place the scaffolds back into the incubator. Stain the cells using a commercially available live dead kit from Invitrogen to visualize the cells and fibers using a fluorescent microscope equipped with filters for Tritzy and Fitzy. As expected, Scaffolds collected onto a grounded flat plate produce randomly distributed fibers, while scaffolds collected on a rotating mandrel produce aligned fibers when viewed using scanning electron microscopy. During photo cross-linking of the scaffold, we place a photo mask between the scaffold and the light source. After submersion of the scaffold in deionized water, unreacted HA, those areas blocked from light, and PEO is removed, and we see the formation of macropores. As evident from the fluorescent dye, simultaneous electrospinning of the MEHA and PEO jets results in a composite scaffold containing distinct fiber populations composed of the individual polymers. The HMSCs appear to interact positively with the fibers. Not only do they remain viable, as evident by the green stain, they also appear to be directed to orient themselves such that they are aligned along the red fibers. We've just shown you how to electrospin fiber scaffolds for tissue engineering. We have also introduced additional capabilities such as photo patterning and multi-polymer electrospinning. When doing this procedure, it's important to remember to optimize each polymer's electrospinning parameters to form uniform fibers prior to attempting any further experiments. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.